Welcome. NOAA has just released its January 2019 Global Climate Report, and this video is a summary of the data that it contains. Every month, NOAA puts out a map showing the significant climate anomalies around the globe. This is the one for January of 2019. As you can see, the vast majority of these indicate areas that had much above normal temperatures, particularly in Australia and New Zealand. The one exception to this was North America, where some areas were much below normal and that some other areas were much above normal. As far as sea ice is concerned, in the Arctic we had the sixth lowest sea ice extent on record, in the Antarctic the second lowest sea ice on record. Also El Nino has arrived, although it looks as though it's going to be relatively short-lived and a mild one. Here we break down the temperatures to land and ocean in the northern and southern hemisphere. Globally, the oceans were the third warmest on record, and the land was the fourth warmest on record. In the Northern Hemisphere, it was the fifth warmest January on record, and in the Southern Hemisphere, it was the second warmest January on record. So let's see how temperatures were distributed around the globe. These are 250 by 250 kilometer pixels, and this is what's called a percentiles map. It measures the temperature with respect to the previous 140 years. So where you see deep red pixels, those are areas that are setting record warm temperatures, and where you see deep blue pixels, those are areas that are setting a record cold temperatures. Now as you can see, there are no record coldest pixels on this plot. There are seven pixels that are much cooler than average. There are hundreds of pixels that are much warmer than average. And there are 69 pixels that are setting new records. For the month of January, the temperature was 0.88 degrees centigrade above the 20th century average, which remember contained quite a bit of global warming itself. That represents an increase of 0.17 degrees centigrade over January of 2018. So there's been significant warming since then. Also, you can see this warm area off the South American coast. That is the El Nino that I just mentioned. There is an independent way of gathering whether the planet is still warming or not. And that's to compare the number of daily record highs for a number of stations with the number of daily record lows. In January of 2019, we had 4,117 record highs set compared to only 2,559 record lows. That's a ratio of 1.6 to 1, which implies that the planet is still warming. So here's my matrix of month rankings. I've put in January of 2019 as the third rank, but that changes all the previous ranks. Now I can adjust those ranks accordingly. If 2019 is the third rank, that means 2017 becomes the fourth rank, 2014 becomes the fifth rank, and 2018 becomes the sixth rank. January on record. Well, let's take a look at the upper atmosphere. This is the satellite data from January 2019. And there are two main groups that analyze these data, the University of Alabama Huntsville and the remote sensing systems. For the lower troposphere, which is about four kilometers up in the atmosphere, they found it was the sixth and fourth warmest respectively, with an average trend of 0.17 degrees centigrade per decade, which is remarkably close to what the thermometer data at the surface give. The mid troposphere was the fifth warmest according to both groups with an average trend of 0.12 degrees centigrade warming per decade. The stratosphere, UAH reckoned it was the coolest, RSS the second coolest, and they had an average cooling trend of 0.28 degrees centigrade per decade. So let's take a look at the sea ice extent in January of 2019. In the Arctic, it was the sixth lowest on record. That makes 21 consecutive years where that has been the case. And there's an average reduction of minus 3.2% per decade in the sea ice there. In the Southern Hemisphere, the story is slightly different. It was the second lowest sea ice extent recorded in January and the fourth straight year where we've had below average sea ice extent in the Southern Hemisphere. And the overall trend in the Southern Hemisphere is an increase in sea ice of 0.9% per decade. Well, let's take a look at sea ice from a global point of view rather than the two individual hemispheres. This plot here is a plot of the month by month sea ice extent in the two hemispheres combined. And each year is color coded according to the key in the middle of the plot. I've marked here where we are in 2019. And as you can see, there's only four years that are actually got lower sea ice extents than 2019. So we're well on our way to having another year with a very low total sea ice extent. Another thing that people seem to make a lot of fuss about these days is global sea ice volume. And this is a plot of it. 
And you can see that the trend here is very, very clear that we have a continuing downward trend with odd fluctuations, of course, but the overall trend is quite significantly downwards, being about 200 cubic kilometers of ice being lost every year. The other big news is El Nino is here. You can see that in December of 2018, we reached a value of one in the sea surface temperature anomaly, which is an indication of an El Nino. However, if you look at the forecast from here on out for the rest of the year, it seems that this El Nino is not going to intensify very much and uh, will by the end of the year be near neutral conditions again. Okay, let's see where we are as far as the greenhouse gases are concerned. First, the uh, statistics for carbon dioxide. At the moment, we're at about 411 parts per million. That would put it up here in the top right-hand corner of this plot. And the rate of increase in carbon dioxide is three parts per million per year. But that is accelerating. The rate for methane, CH4, is actually higher, increasing by six uh, parts per million per year. January of 2019 was the third warmest January on record. That marks 408 consecutive months, that's 34 years, with the average temperature above the 20th century average. El Nino has arrived but is likely to be mild and short-lived. And my prediction is that 2019 will be the third or fourth warmest year on record. You heard it here first. So until next time, goodbye.